What's up, Homestead Homie? This is Off Group with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Stacy, and today we are going to make fermented ginger carrots. Okay, so we are going to do fermented ginger carrots today. I, um, I'm cooking dinner and all that, and I, I'm running out of my fermented carrots. I love carrots because they stay crunchy after you ferment them. So what I've already done is I, you're gonna take about a pound of carrots and, and cut them up. Um, you can keep them bigger. I'm gonna shred them up a little bit more. And then I took about a two inch nub of ginger, you know, about two inches or so, and then I chopped it up and put it in there already. All right, and I put some seasoning in there already since I have this little hand blender and I'm going to chop them up. And actually I have a lot in there, so I might have to have Doug do it because it might be too hard for me to get. Normally I don't put that many in there. <laughs> You're gonna have to get a very Doug. Oh. This is the best hand blender. It's like one of those made for TV hand blenders and I use it for everything. If I make salsas or whatever, I'm gonna kind of chop up a little bit. Sauerkraut. Except for, you don't want to ever fill it up this much because this is harder to do. So I'm gonna grind this up. And now it's creating some of the juices. Now the key ingredient when you're fermenting is salt, because that's what's going to help preserve it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you can put any seasonings. I put a mixture of, you know, basil and rosemary. All right. So now I'm going to dump them in my pan. And when you guys are making yours, you don't have to put any seasoning. Salt's all you need. But I thought I'd try something a little different. Normally I just do them plain, so I put a few different seasonings in it this time. Okay, and then you're gonna need two teaspoons of sugar, or sugar, salt. And I use the pink Himalayan sea salt because it has 83 trace minerals that the human body needs. The highest of all your sea salts. And then I'm going to mix it up really good with my hands. I'm going to squish it so I can build up all the juices in here. So when this is all done with, I'm going to let this set in just a little bit after I kind of get the juices flowing with the salt in it. And um, I'm going to let it set about 15, 20 minutes. and then have two pints. This makes about two pints. And we're going to put them in the jars and then I'm gonna show you how to ferment it. So I will be back. It's been about 20 minutes and I have been letting this sit and it's created a little bit of a juice. But it's not gonna be enough juice to fill up my jar. Uh, this isn't quite a whole pound. Um, this is about a pint and a half or so. Um, so I'm gonna, I think this should be fine on this. So generally it, your carrots will go anywhere from a pint and a half or two pints for what I just showed you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into my mason jar. Make sure when you guys are doing this that you use a wide mouth because I'm gonna show you another trick. You can keep it so that the carrots don't pop up to the top and get any air. Because your goal is when you're doing this, you wanna keep it submerged in the brine solution that we're gonna make, which is the water and the salt. Okay. Put it in there. I'm a messy cooker here. Okay. 
And you want to really make sure that this stuff is pushed down good. So I'm going to push it down really, 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 really good with my hands. Mush it down. Because we know on our diet, we want a fermented food every day to add to help with our gut, bacteria, help everything work the way it needs to work. And having a nice couple of tablespoons, a tablespoon of fermented veggies every day are great with your meals to help with digestion. Just phenomenal. All right. So that works pretty good. Push it down. Then I'm gonna make a brine solution for every cup of water. You need a teaspoon. All right, I'm gonna make two cups right here because I'm gonna use this and put it in the refrigerator. So if I need it later while it's fermenting, I can use it. So I'm just gonna make a brine solution, put my lid on it, and I'm gonna shake it up, okay? So now what I need to do is I'm gonna make sure I don't have any air pockets. There's already a little juice in here from the juice it created from it sitting. So then I pour my brine solution so that it is covered. And then here's my trick. You're going to get one of the small white uh, little uh, mason jars here and I'm gonna put it here so that it pushes the carrots down and I have that brine solution which is over it just like that okay I might dump a little bit out all right once that is done Push it really good. I'm gonna get a cheesecloth, or I used um, an old pillowcase here. Nice breathable cotton cloth. I'm trying to get it as flush as I can to the top. And your reason for doing this is just to make sure that no air, you wanna keep that brine solution. So I'm gonna take this out of the refrigerator whenever I'm looking at it, cause this is gonna ferment anyway from seven to 14 days. And I'm gonna put it someplace dark, cover it up, just like you would do kombucha or anything you're gonna ferment, just like this. And I'm gonna put it in a dark place and then I'm gonna maybe check it after five days or so. After my five days, I'm going to take it, take the um, little mason jar that I put in there and um, taste it. And you want a bit of a sour taste. Everyone's taste is different. So if that's a good taste for you, then, you know, it may be done. But average 7 to 14. If you're in a pretty warm area, humid area, it probably will ferment sooner. But you want to go ahead and check it and anywhere from 7 to 14 days. Because the longer it ferments, is it's going to taste a little bit more sour. Okay? And then once you're done and you get the taste that you want, just put a regular lid on top of it, put it in the refrigerator icebox and it'll last a few months and just have a tablespoon or two a day and it's just great for your gut health. And as it's in here and it's fermenting, you may notice that the brine level is kind of going down. You can just go ahead and get this and you're gonna pour it in the little crease here and just make sure that you always have the brine solution over the actual carrot because that's what's gonna keep it from molding and keeping it um, fermenting and keeping it nice and fresh. So always keep this in the fridge and whenever you need it, use it so you keep that over the carrots. Oh, and by the, by the way, when you're putting in your dark place for your 714 days, you need to make sure you put it in a bowl because it's gonna start to ooze a little bit. It may, when it starts to ferment and start bubbling, it's gonna kinda come out of the sides. So make sure you keep it in a bowl too. All right, so happy fermenting to you. This is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and look for us on Instagram and Twitter, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you later. What's up, guys? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Stacy, and I'm a homestead homie. And if you guys haven't ordered,